All right, welcome to lesson 7.3. We're going to move away from graphing now and more into the probability stuff. Our first one is the probability of what are called independent events. And during this lesson, you're going to get you to develop and apply a rule to determine the probability of two end independent events occurring. Now, before we can do that, let's go back and review some of the grade 7 information. First off, a probability is defined by the chance that an outcome is going to occur. The event is what does occur, whereas the outcome is what could occur. Independent means that the first event is not affected by the second. So, for example, you flip a coin. The second time you flip the coin, the coin doesn't know what it did uh, previously. So they're totally independent. Dependent events means the event is affected by previous events. So, for example, if someone gives you 52 cards, tells you to draw a card, what you pull out of that deck, if you don't put it back into the deck of cards, means you've now gone from 52 cards down to 51 cards in the deck. That means that what happened in the first event is going to affect what happens in the second event, depending on what card was removed. How do we multiply fractions? Well, to go 2 over 3 times 4 over 5 is top times top, 2 times 4, and 3 times 5 gives you 8 over 15. And finally, how do you go from a fraction to a ratio to a percent? And we'll go over that when we get to it. Okay, so let's take a look at two things here. Consider the following two options, the two objects. A spinner with four equal sectors labeled A, B, C, and D, and a coin with a head and a tail. So what we want to do here is we want to create a table with all possible events. So we take a look. The first thing that could happen is on the, the coin, we could get heads. And I'm going to use H for heads. Now, if I go over and I spin the spinner, I could get an A. So it would give me a, what's called an HA outcome. Now, the second thing that could have happened is I could have got a head the first time, but then I could have got a B. If I head the, sec the third time, then I could have got a C. Head the fourth time, and I could have got a D. So now I've got HA, HB, HC, HD. So heads on the coin, followed by all four possibilities on the spinner. Now, it would be different if when I flipped the coin, I didn't get a heads, I got a tails. So now, if I get tails the first, oper the first time on the coin, the second time on the spinner could be again an, H, an, uh, sorry, an A, so I get tails A. Of course, tails B, tails C, tails D. So here is my outcomes. Okay? So, if you take a look at this, how many outcomes are listed? There are eight of them. Now, are they all equally likely to occur? And to understand that question, you've got to go back here and take a look at whether or not the heads or tails, whether one of the sides has a greater possibility of landing than the other. And on tails, if it's flipped properly, it's not going to be a problem. On the spinner, everything is one quarter of the circle, A, B, C, and D. There's no, no letter which has a greater chance of happening than the, than the other. Now, I'm just going to draw another spinner beside it just to show you what would happen if there was a difference. Okay, What if this were to be the case? If you look at that, C and D have a big disadvantage because they're only one of the eight of that spinner, whereas B is half the spinner. So in this case, Bs would have a greater chance of occurring than any of the other letters. So the question was, if you take a look back here, are they all equally likely to occur? In our first example, with the coin and the spinner here, the answer is yes. If the spinner had been this one, you would have to have answered no. So what is the, are, are they all equally likely to occur? Yes. What is the probability of getting heads? Now go back to your table. And look, how many out of the total have heads? So let's go to our outcomes. I've got a total of eight. And you'll notice I've got one, two, three, four of them have heads. So that means the chance of getting heads is four out of eight. And yes, you have to reduce your fraction. So four out of eight reduces to be one half. Divide both top and bottom numerator and denominator by four to get that to reduce. So what is the probability of getting B? So now I have to go back to the same list. What's the chance of getting B? Well, let's take a look. There's a B here, and there's a B here. So there's only two that have B out of the eight. So two out of eight. So how are we going to start calculating this? Well, we've got to have some sort of structure. We can't just keep writing the answer down. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start going back to what we did last year with our formula. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but this is what we had. Probability is calculated as the chance, or sorry, the, des the desired outcome occurring. I can't write there. Ran out of space. over the possible outcomes. Okay, so let's take a look over here we just did. We said that this was 4 out of 8. So what we have here, our probability, I don't know my scale, my, it always happens that I end up getting my, so go to the edge of the smart board, where everything gets kind of messed up. So I'm just going to move back over to where we were. You can shorten up probability to be prob, and you can take desired outcomes and turn that into desired, DES, over possible. You're not allowed to go any shorter. So there's your formula. So now what you have to do is take a look at heads. How many of those outcomes had heads? There was four of them. How many of them <clears throat> in total? Eight. So there's four that we desired to have out of a total possible of eight. And now we can, re we can reduce this fraction. And it's one over two. So this is how you're going to present your answers to me, all right? You're going to take and put them in this type of a setup, right there. So let's take a look at the probability of getting a B. You're going to start out with your formula. Prob is equal to what we desire over what is possible. Now we found out that when we looked at the probability, there was Let's go back here. Probability of getting a B. There was two of them that had a B. So that is two out of eight, which means it reduces to be one over four. Okay? Now, what's the probability of getting heads B? Okay, now we're getting more specific. Okay? So my probability is equal to what I desire over what is possible. So let's go look back at the table, heads B. There's only one heads B, and that is right here, out of all of them. So we are down to, we desire to have the one occur out of the possible eight. Now, you don't have to take and reduce this one because one over eight is already in lowest form. Okay, let's take a look and go to the next step. Can you identify a quicker way of doing this besides listing all those outcomes and counting them? For example, we only had eight there, but if you roll a dice twice, a six-sided die twice, you're going to end up having 36 possibilities. All right. If you um, roll three of them in a row, it starts getting so it's such a large amount that you can't change it. So what I want to do is let's take a look at the probability of how we can do it. Multiple probabilities are calculated by multiplying their individual probability. Okay, so the probability of getting a B heads is equal to the probability of getting a B times the probability of getting heads. All right? So that is what you would have to use for a formula. All right, now you probably could shorten this one up just to be BH. B head, but this says we're trying to find the probability of a B followed by a heads, and we need to find the probability of B and multiply it by the probability of heads. So if we go back to what we just did there, this is what you're going to have to show me. The probability of heads. Okay, now take a look at a coin. Okay, what's the probability of getting heads here? Well, probability of getting heads is one and two. Okay, now let's go to the spinner. The chance of getting a B in that spinner, there was an A, B, a C, and a D, so the probability of getting the B is desired over possible. So the probability of a B is one out of four chances. Okay, so now we know the two probabilities. The probability of flipping a coin and getting a heads, and the probability of spinning the spinner and getting a B. So the probability of both happening, the probability of B followed by H is the probability of B times the probability of H. 
okay? And you'll see that I've actually shortened things up a little bit using the letter P. So, so if you wanted to, I suppose we could shorten it up even further here. The probability of B heads is equal to the probability of B times the probability of heads. So, to calculate this, probability of a, of a, of a, a head, oh, sorry, B is 1 in 4, probability of the heads is 1 in 2. And if you go back to how we calculate this, I'm not going to be asking you to show me how you did it. This is step for your fractions. I need you to come up with 1 in 8. 1 times 1 and 4 times 2. If you can't remember how to do this, it looks like this. One over eight. Okay? And you may seem to you may think, oh man, this is so much work. Well, wait till you have to do if you had to make a list out of all the combinations of pulling a deck of cards, rolling a, uh, a die, flipping a coin, and then maybe pulling some marbles out of a bag. It starts to become even, you know, to the point where it's almost ludicrous in terms of trying to make sure you could get a combination written down. So let's try something similar. What's the probability of drawing a club from a deck of cards and then replacing it and then drawing a face card, jack, queen, or king? To do this, first thing you need to do, need to do sorry, is to calculate the probability of each individual thing. So the probability of a club is equal to what we desire over what is possible. So now you have to go to your deck of cards and you have to think, okay, how many clubs are there in a deck of cards? Well, there are 13 of them. Ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then Jack, Queen, King. There are 52 cards in total, which means the probability of getting a club is 1 in 4. Now, probability of getting a face card. What we desire over what is possible. Probability of face card. There are how many face cards? Well, I think there's a jack, queen, king of clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds. So that's three, five, four. So that's 12 of them out of a total of 52 cards. So again, the probability of face card is one in, sorry, it's three in 13. Now, what's the probability of getting a club followed by a face card? Well, the probability of a club by a face card is the probability of the club times the probability of the face card. So we have the probability of the club, which is 1 over 4, times the probability of the face card, which is 3 over 13. So doing the math, 1 times 3 is 3, and 4 times 13 is 52. So the chance of getting um, a club, putting the card back in, and then pulling out the, the face card, that would be a chance of 3 and 52. Now, to chart this out, you'd have to take um, oh, a lot. There would be like 52 possibilities for just the, uh, the first draw, and they would each have another chance of getting 52 cards on, on the second one. So, yeah, it just it becomes a mess, all right? So let's stick with the theoretical and not trying to make all the combinations. All right? Let's go to the next example. Okay, A, B, C, C, D, 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 E. So what is the probability of spinning an A, followed by spinning a C, followed by spinning a D? So we've got three consecutive spins. So let's start with the probability of an A. That's desired over possible. Now, taking a look at the probability of an A, what is the actual probability? Sorry, what? how many A's are there in total? And you'll see this one, and there are eight sectors. So that's one in eight. Let's go to the probability of C. What we desire over what is possible. So the probability of C, going back to your chart, or your, your spinner, there are two C's out of eight this time. So that means the probability of getting a C reduces down to 1 over 4. All right. Next is what's the probability of getting a D? And you'll see there's three Ds out of 8. So the probability of a D, what we desire, or what is possible, so my probability of a D is 3 out of 8. So now, the probability of them all happening, so the probability of all, 
is the probability of the A, A times the probability of the C times the probability of the D. All right. So let's take a look at how this works out. Probability of the A was 1 over 8. Probability of the C was 1 over 4. Probability of the D was 3 over 8. So the probability of everything happening, 1 times 1 times 3 is a 3. And the bottom, 8 times 4 times 8 is 256. So the chance of all three of these occurring is 3 out of 256, or three chances out of every um, 256. Okay, so if I wanted to present this stuff as um, decimals and ratios and stuff, you have to think back to when we were doing decimals and ratios. Remember to get a fraction, 3 out of, fifth, three out of uh, 256. We want to change this into decimal. It's simply 3 divided by 256, and that will get you your decimal. If I want to do a ratio, it's 3 to 256. Now, this here is something that we've done a lot of. So you should be, for all of our rates and stuff that we've done previously, you should be very, very comfortable with changing that stuff up. Okay? That brings us to the end of the lesson. If you have anything else you want to talk about, come and talk to me. Um, oh, wait, we've got one question left. Does this mean that it'll happen three times out of every 256? And the answer to that is no. All right? Anytime you do something, uh, there's this effect called randomness. And random means that you can't predict it. It's always going to be close to, but not quite. It's like flipping a coin. You flip a coin once, you get heads. Does that mean the next time you flip the coin, you're going to get tails? No, it doesn't. Because the second flip is random. You might get a heads, you might get a tails. But if you flip the coin a million times, you would probably get 500,000 or very close to 500,000 heads and 500,000, close to 500,000 tails. Okay? But it's not going to be perfect. So does this mean you're going to get three out of every 256? The answer is no. It's random. Now, what this means is it should it it should be close. But that does not mean that you're going to always get it three out of every 256 times. If that were the case, all of our casinos would lose money. Okay? All right, so now that we've covered that, we'll cover that more in detail a little bit later. So page 410, get started on your assignment, and we will talk to you next lesson.